So, Dom, first of all, great performance. Just, now you've had a few moments to digest it. How do you feel the fight went? Um, it was closer than I wanted, but I've had a lot of split decisions in my career, so it's not too new. Were you surprised it was a split decision when they started reading the scores out? Mm, no, because my coach was pretty honest with me in the second, and that's what got me to push it in the third. He told me, you know, you probably lost that second. I kind of let off the, <coughs> excuse me, I kind of let off the gas a little bit in the second. And uh, when I let off the gas, that, that gave him like a couple more punches to land. And so then I had to pick it up in the third. You mentioned on media day how one of the things to overcome in Jacksonville was having a lack of warm-up time. Just curiously, logistically tonight, did you have the proper time and did it make a big difference? I mean, you saw the fight and I believe it made a huge difference. And I think that would be a better question for my coaches, to be honest, because I had a long warm-up. I feel like I warmed up for like 45 minutes straight. I never really stopped. And I do feel that makes a difference, definitely. This is a, it might seem a bit of a weird question, but you're the sort of guy I can imagine really being able to utilize this in your game. Did you notice the clocks in the octagon this time or facing into the octagon? Actually, I did not. I try to listen to my coaches, and, and when they go, 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 push, push. All right, you got to push, you got to push. I just, we have a good connection, so I can trust them to be my clock. Okay. And then, obviously, I think the thing that's going to get the headlines from this fight is your post-fight call-out for a charity event <laughs> with Monster. Uh, or Hans, um, Hans, what's his last name, sorry? Well, you know, he'll probably love that he's getting plugged like this, to be honest. So it's actually a benefit for him, so he should thank me. Um, but yeah, it was just, you know, that we're in a day and age where you can, if I take a picture with Conor McGregor like this, now I'm Conor McGregor's friend, right? If I take a picture with Dominic Cruz and have, a bu have him commenting on my, on my page, we're in a day and age where that looks like we're friends. Well, I mean, I may be your friend, but you can't use me in order to get clout, as they put it. And I'm just, I'm not here to be used. I work very hard. Look at my face, look at my body. I get beat to, beat to death for a living. So when you try to force me and you text me, if I don't comment on your page, if I don't give you an interview that you're gonna take what pays my bills, what are we doing? Monster sponsors me, not you. And so this was a call out because he calls himself a pro fighter. He's got 100 pounds weight on me. And I'm like, we can make this a win-win situation. Let's do a charity event. Monster picks the charity. And then we, we scrap it out. You know, he's a pro, He says he's got three pro fights. Let's prove it. Put your money where your mouth is. You got a little tiny guy calling you out for charity, not for anything else. Why not? And this is Hans Molenkamp, just to be clear. Yeah. How long is this issue between you and him? Going? I don't have an issue. I just want charity to make some money. I have no issue with this guy. You mentioned on the broadcast, though, that he's keeping fighters trapped in contracts. Is that the situation between you and him? Are you trapped in a contract with this guy? It's not trapped in a contract. It's forced to give him clout, forced to hype him up if I want to make money. I'm, Monster pays me. So it would be, the equivalent would be, does the UFC pay me? Yes. Does Dana White own the UFC? Yes. So if Dana White says, hey, go on my page and like my page, Dana White has complained on this guy. Dana White has gone on this man's page and said something. They ignored it like it didn't happen. So I'm not the first one to say something. Dana's also said something. Maybe ask him about it. I will. With that in mind, do you think Dana might enjoy this idea or might go along with this idea? I don't know, but if, if he does, Dana, maybe you'll do it. Maybe you could set up this charity event because he, call, you know, he calls himself a pro fighter, Hans. Let's go. Should that charity event not come to fruition, what do you want next in your MMA career? Is there anyone else in the rankings that you're looking at that you'd like to fight against? Are you just looking to see how it sort of develops over the next few months? What if this charity event doesn't come to fruition, would you like to do now? It's a good question. Um, I need to go back and watch the fight, correct my mistakes in practice, talk to my coach, Eric Del Fiero. Talk to my team, Eric Uresk, uh, Danny Perez, who's my boxing coach back in, at a boxing club. Artem, you're doing a great job keeping it going in San Diego. Thank you. Um, all my people in San Diego, I appreciate you. All my people in Tucson, Arizona, I appreciate you. But I need to go back and get with them because, you know, they've been with me through thick and thin. When you've been up and down the way I have, you see the people who stick with you uh, stand out the most. And, again, that's why I have to thank Monster Energy Drink 
for sticking with me through this time. Which is definitively not politics, like you told Joe Rogan. It's not. This is about Monster Energy Drink. Me calling out Hans Mollekamp is about charity. Now, I'm sure you wanted the stoppage win, but were you happy to get three rounds in there after, like, you, your, your fight against Cejudo was quick, and before that, you had it fought since the Garbrandt fight, so three rounds under your belt, I'm sure you're happy with that, right? Yeah, I mean, were you happy with it, watching? It was a good fight. And I'm happy. But I wasn't in the fight, so I want to know what your thoughts are. Well, I mean, if I'm in a fight and it goes the distance, I'm learning, I'm challenging myself. That guy was on a three-fight win streak. Um, I've, I've got the most wins in Bantamweight history right now. There's a lot to be thankful for, a lot to be grateful for right now. So, yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I might not look like it, but I'm pretty happy. Uh, how are the legs? We saw you uh, limping up on the stage when you got here. I mean, I'm good. I'm just naturally a little bit swollen, a little bit sore. Um, my Achilles is a little bit sore, but I think that just little strain, bruises here and there, swelling, nothing crazy. You just got into a fight, so I'll be fine. I'm hurt, not injured. And then between rounds, his corner was saying, like, continue with the leg kicks, continue with the leg kicks, counter his high kicks with leg kicks. Were you, were you aware of that? Like, ha like, halfway through the first round, you must have said, like, this is their game plan. Yeah, I've got a really good lefty that I've been training with, Brendan. Um, I can't ever pronounce his last. Raftery. Brendan Raftery. Check him out. He got me prepared for this, and the dude blasted my legs for three months straight. So even when – that's part of what I needed is in – practice when you get your legs blasted off and they bruise for weeks at a time because somebody's kicking them you get confidence that your body can handle things like that so even though he was attacking my legs it's okay I'm, I was I knew I could handle it I knew my body would take it and I could return the damage and I did how how risky is, is training leg kicks like that because after the Connor Poirier fight a lot of fighters came out and said well you can't really train for that because you might get injured taking like calf kicks or leg kicks in a camp. So how difficult is it training for that? It is difficult. I mean, we're have you, dude, yeah, I've been kicked. It hurts. So. Training for a fight is difficult. <laughs> There's not one part any day of the week. That's not difficult about training for a fight. That's why I'm still here doing this after 16 years is because even after all the things that I've done, I'm here to transform. Transformation is a public event. I have to put myself in this position to be vulnerable in front of all you to critique me and tell me I suck in order for me to transform in this position. And I, I'm very grateful to my higher power, Jesus Christ, that I was able to get through this and make that next step in transformation to evolve and grow and see what I'm made of. I made it through. Here I am. I'll go back, watch the fight, critique myself, which I'm very hard on myself, so I'm going to do the best I can to be gentle and uh, move forward from here. Uh, and then finally, did you, see, did you feel him fading in round three? It looked like you had the same pace as each other for the first two and then third. You kind of Yeah, that's the key for me. And I shouldn't have let off the gas in the second the way I did, and I, that's what I'm a little upset with myself about. I am used to a five-round fight, and I felt that um, I sometimes will give two or sometimes three by a, by a smidget because then I can kind of feel them use their, I don't want to say, how do you word it? I can feel them explode and use their energy by a lot, and then that pays off for me later on, and I can use it against them. And when my coach came back in the second and said, yeah, you might have lost that one, I said, okay, it's time to really turn it up in the third, and I was able to do that. And when he came out in the third, I felt his pressure, but his offensive pressure wasn't there, if that makes sense. He's pushing forward, but it wasn't forward with combinations and technique. It was forward with the sake of moving forward to not look like he's losing moving back. And so I was able to use that to create some openings, take down opportunities, and land some right hands and some combinations. Hey, Dom, over here. I was wondering, you know, it was brought up 11 years since winning the WEC Bantamweight title today. Um, you and Joseph Benavidez competing in some pretty fun scraps. I mean, just... What do you think that says about just your longevity, his, and did you take anything from that symmetry fighting tonight? Well, there's a couple of guys that were on this card. Tim Elliott, uh, Joseph Benavidez. And, you know, when you look at these guys, you guys look each other in the eyes, and you guys know, like, hey, we're still here. You can't help it. And I respect those guys with all my heart. And I respect every fighter, obviously. But there's a different connection when, you know, I've trained with Tim Elliott back at Alliance back in the day. And I've obviously had, I think, you know, eight round wars with Joseph Benavides. He gave me one cut on my nose that I look at every day and have to think about him. 
So things like that make a difference in your life. That's that's what's so beautiful about this sport. Like I've said so many times, this sport does nothing but tell the truth. And that's what I love about it. You can't, if my feelings get hurt because I lose, I can't cancel anybody. Mm -hmm. If I'm not happy about something, I can't just say, I'm offended. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Nobody cares because it's a fight. So guess what you do? You do what everybody should have to do, in my opinion. Suck it up, move forward, and get it going. Make it work. And then finally, the hardcore fans, they like to use phrases like pride, pride never die. There's a lot of people, WEC, never forget. On a night like tonight, do you feel like you remind people just why the little guys are some of the most exciting in the sport? When I fought Uriah Faber, he sent me recently, like a month ago, a text of his bout agreement. He made seven grand to fight me for a world title at 145 pounds. I fought, I made two grand that night to lose to him at 145 pounds for my very first world title fight on television. Um, look how far this sport has come. I'm very grateful to Dana White, uh, Lorenzo Fertitta, Frank Fertitta, um, and now IMG WME for keeping this moving. Fox Sports, all my people, Steve Becker, uh, you know, all those people, Zach Candido. Uh, the, you know, the list goes on of people that I could be grateful for that look how much this thing has grown and we're still here. And without Fox and without ESPN and Glenn from ESPN, um, you know, there's no way that this sport could keep growing the way it is. So I got to give a shout out to all them too because, you know, the, the media is a big reason why this thing has hit so much, why the numbers have gone up for us fighters. It's because we're covered on ESPN, we're covered on such huge networks that now there's an opportunity for us to make money. Yeah, congrats, Tom. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Tom. Dom. Go for it, Shades. And congrats on the victory. He was stuffing the takedowns early on. Third round, you were able to get a few. What was the turning point for you in this fight? Um, it's a good question. I guess I'd have to watch it, but I would say the third round, I could feel his pressure, and I could feel that I could use it to... I don't know, I just felt like a little bit lack, a little lack in his technique in the third. And I could use that to create, some, when I saw that, I could use that to create some openings. How much weight does this victory take off your shoulders? Because you haven't gotten a victory in a while, and a lot consider you the greatest bantamweight of all time. Does this remind some of the young guys that you're still here, you're still competing? That's a great question. I guess that would be up to their interpretation. Um, I guess that would be up to everybody's interpretation. Because realistically, uh, nobody really names himself that. I don't think, I mean, you can, but, you know, Muhammad Ali always said, I'm the greatest of all time. I, I believe I'm the greatest in this division that's, that's done it. I've held the belt longer than anybody and I've defended it. But that's really up to other people and their interpretations that make you great. History tells the story. And what I've done, I believe, tells that story. So um, that's up to the interpretation of others, but I'm very proud of myself. And uh, for the record, congrats, and the Schmo supports the charity uh, match you're going yes, for. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Kind of following up what he said about what the, the young fighters think about it, I know you've always been a, a guy that doesn't seem like what the opponent says gets into your head, but do you take some extra pleasure from the fact that your opponent was saying, oh, Dom was unique five years ago, ten years ago, guys switch you know, footwork all the time now. Do you take some extra solace or extra joy out of the fact that you went out and prove that even though he thought he knew what your game plan or how your style was, that you still won the day? Yeah, it's always nice to prove your opponent wrong. I can't deny that because, I mean, I don't know how many fights I've had. I, don't, I honestly don't. I can't remember or keep track because what's the point? I just show up and fight. But I'll say that every single fight that I've had, they told me I couldn't do something, and I had to go out there and do it. Um, when, I, when I was I remember after a three and a half year layoff, blowing both my knees out, that everybody's saying that TJ Dillashaw was the next better version of me, and then I went out and beat him to retain the world title. That felt good. When I beat Scott Jorgensen, who's a Pac-10 champ, shout out to Roman Bravo Young, who's about to go win the Pac-10 championships as well, uh, from Penn State, shout out to him, because he's about to get it done, my Tucson boy right there. And, um, you know, I was able to beat Scott Jorgensen to, to, to bring the WC and the UFC title together and join them, I was said that I couldn't out-wrestle him, and I did. Um, 
I wasn't able to take down Kenny in the early rounds, but the takedown attempts opened up opportunities on my feet. And that's something that I got to say that everybody's got to take note of is just because you don't finish the takedown doesn't mean it's not doing something. This is mixed martial arts. So while they might stuff it, keep attacking because it creates openings. Eventually, you know, you keep going to the well, it's going to serve you right. And lastly, for me, you said you're going to go back, sort of critique yourself, your heart on yourself. Is there any sort of moment in there where you also have a little fun? You, you listen to what the commentators say, you listen to what DC has, says, and do you ever call them up and say, hey, DC, I can't believe you said this? How does that conversation usually happen if it does? No, I try to take it easy on DC. DC gets his feelings hurt real easy. He's like a big heart. And if you're too hard on him, he, he, gets, he gets hurt. So I try, to pull the I try to put the brakes on big DC and just give him hugs and love. Um, but who knows what those guys were saying. I'll be honest, when I'm my best, I'm completely present. And I was very focused on being completely present, trusting my instincts, not being in the past, not being in the future, being where my power is, which is in the moment, in the now. And that, that means with my coaches. Eric Del Fiero, who's been with me since day one. Eric Uresk, who just really stuck with me in some hard times over this pandemic when things were going down and up and down and up. And he just stayed in the gym. And, pushed everybody in the gym and kept us together, even though, you know, things are hard in this pandemic. And uh, Brendan Raftery, who came in every day in the dark, sometimes earlier than me, and he's hitting the bag, and he's mad-dogging me, and he hates me, and that, that drove me. <laughs> it was great to see you in there again. Congrats. Thank you. Shout out to Danny Perez, too. You're, the ba you're a bad boxer. Thank you, man. In the back, you, you said that this sport does nothing but tell the truth. At this point in your career, were there any new truths uh, revealed to you either in the camp or during the fight? Hmm, good question. New truths. I would say I'd have to, I'll have to watch the fight. I, it's unfair for me to I, I honestly answer that right now because it was a whirlwind in there. Um, a new truth for me is that uh, any doubts that, that you can have, you can work through. You can get through. You just have to face the fire and walk through it instead of turn the other way. Thanks, guys.